Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in on our previous custom basic panel video. Today we're going to be talking about the custom advanced panels. Uh, so really excited to get this one started, walk through some different examples of what custom advanced panels are, what they look like, the different features they have, and really the component layout and size that drove them to be a custom advanced panel versus a custom basic panel. So we have these two types of custom uh, panel services and we break them out between basic and advanced really based on the complexity and then the associated prices to them as well so uh, once again go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button uh, leave a comment or two and let's go ahead and we'll get started So as I mentioned in the intro, uh, we're talking a little bit about custom basic versus custom advanced. So there was a previous video that talked about custom basic panels. I'll go ahead and link that right up there in the top corner and you can click on that. Uh, and this here is actually an example of what one of those custom basic panels would be. Uh, so you can see here the only difference between this and a traditional glass cockpit panel is we've added three of the Logitech FIP gauges on the right side of the panel. What that did is it lengthened the actual panel so it's more material, uh, but then also the engineering and, and development required to go ahead and do that as well. Uh, the shipping also increases slightly because it is a larger panel, it requires different shipping box and different dimensions and weights. And, uh, and obviously all those charges are driven by the overall box size. So this is an example of a custom basic panel. Uh, we're going to walk through a few different custom advanced panels, and that's really going to be the focus of the video today. And so not only the previous custom basic video, this example, as well as the custom advanced uh, examples here in the video should hopefully give everybody a pretty comprehensive picture of not only our capabilities on custom panels, but also the different services and why they're different. So um, let's go ahead. Let's get started. Okay, so we had to get a little bit crafty. We actually put a white sheet behind the panel because if you remember, I've got the black computer, black monitor, the black panel, everything looks really, really dark. It actually wasn't possible to really see the panel. So hopefully the white background, the sheet will help give a little bit of uh, background to it. We're getting a little crafty, but this here, uh, once again, this is an example of a custom advanced panel. So uh, here, you know, I wanna kinda talk about where this whole thing started. So this here, is the Next Level Racing gaming desktop. This is a, an actual plate that mounts. Uh, this is the front of the plate here, and then this is the back of the plate. The plate has a ton of under channel bracing for support and rigidity. And so what the customer wanted was, initially they wanted a Slavix panel that could mount onto their Next Level Racing gaming desktop. And we looked at basically the design and the length of the panel was way longer than what the actual gaming desktop platform was. And so the panel wasn't going to look really great on it. It kind of, you know, overhang on the edges. And so what we actually decided to do was we completely re-engineered the Next Level Racing gaming desktop platform and actually built that platform as the base to the Slavix panel. So the customer can literally take their panel place it onto their next level racing gaming cockpit, screw it in here in the front, and the whole thing is ready to go. So we, uh, we actually made, and I'll actually flip it around and show you the back as well so you can actually see the back. There's a lot of uh, strength gusseting, and then I'll also show you the bottom. It's just kind of cumbersome to look. But really quick, I mean, this is just a, a very long, large panel, right? So the, the cost of this is obviously there's a lot of time, energy, engineering that goes into this. We actually ran quite a few different Zoom sessions with this customer to really dial in the design. So that was a really collaborative way to, uh, to get the design locked in. And, uh, and it's also very large, so it's also very expensive for shipping, but also just a lot of material. And, uh, and, and the whole thing is just absolutely massive. So that's where a lot of the cost comes in on this stuff. It's very bespoke, very custom, but it's really a lifetime product. I mean, this thing is gonna, is gonna last forever. This is amazing. Uh, it's got the RAM mount there over on the side. This is compatible with the real Sim Gear G1000, Virtual Fly Yoko, a Honeycomb Bravo. And if you notice, we have the Honeycomb Bravo base plate without the C-clamps. Uh, so we're putting some M6 nuts in the top and then some M6 bolts in the bottom. And that's sandwiching that whole clamp 
uh, and base plate to the panel itself. Uh, there is also room for three Logitech FIP instrument panels and then two uh, Logitech rectangle slots as well. And there's actually a, uh, a general aviation audio connector too. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but we'll shoot into some of that B-roll and you'll be able to actually see it there. But there is a, uh, an FSX, uh, it's called FSX Solo, FSX Solo. So check those guys out. They've got the really slick USB and you can plug in a GA headset. So, um, you know, it's got all of this stuff integrated into it. It just looks beautiful. It's fantastic. And I'm going to show you the back. We'll show you some B-roll of that. We'll show you the underbody of it. And, uh, and then we also did kind of uh, leveraged our pedestal design too. And so I'm going to go get a couple of the pedestals that we did for this as well. And you can see what those look like. So here hopefully you can actually see the under gusseting that we, uh, we've done here. So we have some mounts here for the pedestal, which I'm going to show in just a minute. Uh, but you can actually see all of this under carriage has been all reinforced. The base of the panel, there's all the things just very much dimensionally, just like that gaming desktop plate was. And so once again, this whole base became the whole base of this Lavix panel. So that was a really unique way for us to be able to do this. It worked out really, really well. Uh, still be able to mount the Yoko with the screws going in through the bottom of the panel right into the Yoko itself. Uh, and then there's another pedestal here on the left side. So I'm going to show you both pedestals and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the next one. And then this one wouldn't be complete as well without showing you the back. And so you can see here, uh, once again, that's that FSX Solo there on the, on the side. But we've done some reinforcement here along the G1000 there to really stiffen up this mid brace and mid uh, channel of the overall cockpit chassis. And then we've added in this gusseting here as well, just on the sides of the Yoko, once again, to bring that stiffness to the overall panel. When you get a, a uh, material with this long and this length this long, you can often get weakness if you don't have uh, specific structural bends and into the metal. And so what we've done is some nice gusseting here. We've welded that on and it's obviously all part of the powder coat system. So. Looks really nice, and uh, we'll walk, walk through the pedestals now. Okay, so the final part to uh, that custom advanced panel are the two pedestals that we've actually incorporated as well. And so I'm going to start with the pedestal that's on the far right side of the panel. And this is a pedestal that is made from three parts. There's a right uh, support, there's a left support, and then there is a uh, what we kind of call the face shield. And this basically connects, obviously, as you can see here with the bolts, and it will sit kind of just like this with the panel. Uh, it'll mount really, really nice. And so what we have here is we have the real Sim Gear GMA350, we have the GFC500 Autopilot, and then we have the GCU479 and the 47X. And what we've done with this is we've actually made this component part of our modular mounting system. And so what there are is there's actually four wing nuts connected to the M4 bolts. And that allows this component to be removed really easily and actually replaced with, this here is the GCU47X. And so it can be replaced with the 47X. So the 479 is backlit. Uh, it's got the, the QWERTY keyboard uh, and the 47X has the, I guess what they call the ABCDEF keyboard. Uh, but these are pre uh, pre predominantly found in the Cirrus uh, the Perspective, Perspective Plus, and, and those components. This, this customer actually uh, flies a Cirrus as well. So this allows him to swap these two in and out uh, if he so desires. So that's the pedestal on the right side of the panel. The pedestal on the left side of the panel actually slides in, and there's a little bit of space underneath the left side of the panel. So if you remember where that FSX Solo audio uh, general aviation connector was, this slides in basically kind of right under it. And there's a, a really nice connection point here for a, a screw or bolt in the nut, as well as a two on the, on the top. So it slides in, gets secured. You have the real sim gear Sierra switch panel uh, here up top. And the customers even added in the white dots to the switches, just like in the real aircraft. So I thought that attention to detail from the customer was really, really unique. Uh, so that's actually these white uh, stickers here, they're basically an indicator if it's uh, on or off while you're actually flying the Cirrus aircraft. Uh, so he, he added those, but basically you have that, and then you have the Cirrus, uh, the fuel selector, the flaps, and uh, the starter switches as well, boost pump, things like that. So the, this component here 
actually connects into the top component with these two ribbon cables. So this whole piece as a package really makes sense. And this will be on the left side of the panel, so that'll just slide right in there uh, and, and basically mount. So this was, once again, really exciting panel to do, a lot of fun, a lot of different components, and uh, we're really excited to share the final pictures in our review section on our website. So uh, we'll get into the next panel here, and we'll keep it going. Okay, so the next custom advanced panel that we're gonna walk through today here is one that is pretty unique. If you look at the base of the panel, as well as these two holes in the panel, basically what that is, is the yokes are gonna be sitting behind the panel itself. Uh, so this customer is using the Bruner yokes, uh, the yokes with the longer shafts, the handle is actually removable. So they can remove the handle, they can uh, put the yoke through the holes here, so it's a dual yoke setup, and then they can reattach the handle. And that distance is long enough where this sits away from the tabletop that it all works. Uh, we've also brought the face forward and flush with the base. So traditionally we have the, uh, the feet here on the outsides. This customer is actually going to mount with screws and bolts and nuts and everything behind the face of the uh, Slavix panel. They're going to mount that to another cockpit frame. Uh, so that's possible to give the panel stability and make it so it actually doesn't fall over because the I'll call the weight and balance of this is very forward, okay? So it's very uh, front forward. It'll just fall over very simply. So it's sitting here on the desk, uh, but you know it will fall over very easily. So this here, Rielsen Gear G1000, uh, Simeonic LCD, uh, the three displays, the standbys, Simeonic switch panel, Rielsen Gear G5s, and a few other components up there. I think they, uh, one of them was like a Hobbs meter and a uh, NELT actually, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's, that's I mean, this, this custom panel, once again, very long, right? Very long panel. Uh, so you know, a little bit more cost in terms of the overall material, manufacturing, the design layout. You know, this isn't our traditional panel. So uh, once again, the gunmetal color though, turned out really good. Really excited to see this one all together from the customer uh, with pictures populated and look, looking forward to having that on our review page too. So. I'll go ahead, I'll get to another example here, and uh, we'll keep it going. Okay, so this next panel here is a combination of a, a taller panel, wider panel, once again as well, uh, but also just a completely custom layout. In uh, addition to that, there's a very unique pedestal here, which is going to accommodate the Logitech slash Satec trim wheel, as well as that Satec TPM throttle, so the push-pull throttle, they don't make that anymore. Uh, you can get them on eBay, but it's going to accommodate that TPM push-pull throttle. And then there's actually, you can see here, we've done an angled pedestal here. So it's angled up and, uh, and kind of to the, the user. And what that's going to accommodate is the Logitech switch panel. And so all those pieces are all going to be component uh, together there. And then you can see here the pedestal, the mounting for it, it actually slides. So this panel will be right to the edge. Slides right in there, really, really nice. And it all lines up. And then those bolts, nuts, all go through there and it secures it. This also is compatible, this specific panel, with the Redbird yoke here. So this will use, this customer will have the Redbird yoke. Quite a few of the Logitech uh, FIP gauges. I believe they also have the, the BIP panel, the, the Satec BIP panel, the, the backlit information panel. Uh, a real sim gear GMA350. A, a different 530 that's actually backlit, uh, not from Real Sim Gear. And then they're gonna have a Real Sim Gear GNS 430. Uh, so once again, you know, larger panel in size, but really good. We also added the holes for the RAM mount compatibility. We install that ball plate to the panel as well when you option that RAM mount compatibility. So not not only just the holes, but also actually mounting the the ball and the the plate to the panel too. So then all you need to buy is the arm and the cradle. Uh, so once again, another custom advanced panel example, uh, so you can get a little bit more familiar with it. And, uh, and that's it for today. So, you know, really appreciate everybody tuning in, taking a look at the videos. You know, once again, that like button, that subscribe button definitely help us. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you're thinking. Shoot us an email. And uh, if there's any other content that you guys would like to see, that'd be beneficial as well. So once again, stay level. We'll see you.